Hello friends, once again, welcome to my YouTube channel. First of all, I thank you for taking your valuable time and interest in this topic. So to begin with, in this video, we will be learning about eco-sensitive zones or in short ESZ. For your convenience and information, the content of this video will revolve around the following points. First, we will discuss in brief about what are protected areas and then after which we will then learn about eco-sensitive zone. And under the umbrella of eco-sensitive zone, first we will learn when did the conceptualization of EAZ in India started, then followed by the general characteristics of an eco-sensitive zone then the objectives and the purposes of declaring any area around the protected area as eco-sensitive zones and last but not the least the activities that are prohibited restricted and permitted when an area is declared as ESZ so these are the things that we will be discussed in this video okay so with that to start with first of all for your information the term eco-sensitive zones in India is linked or associated to the area surrounding the notified and the established protected areas. Therefore, to be able to clearly understand about eco-sensitive zones, it is always convenient to first be clear with what are protected areas. Protected area comprises of a well-defined geographical spaces of land, marine or coastal areas which are legally delineated and designated by the state government for the purpose of providing long-term protections and conservations to the area's biodiversity and its ecosystems. However, for better understanding about the concept of the protected area and then the eco-sensitive zone, let me explain it using examples. Hypothetically, let's say over a period of time, the forest department of the state X has identified one or more undisturbed forest area within its territory and ju jurisdictions and this area is said to be a biodiversity rich forest and these forests provide habitats and haven to large number of wildlife plant species including number of endangered endemic and rare species these undisturbed forests in the state x are of great ecological importance to the state and the biodiversity of the country as a whole to prioritize conservations of the biodiversity and the habitat of such areas within the state the state government will take steps and commitments to protect and enhance the conservation of such areas. Therefore, the state government will then prepare a proposal proposing to provide legal protections to the identified undisturbed forests which is present or which are present in these states. And this proposal will then be submitted to the central government under the ministry of environment forest and climate change and this proposal will then be scrutinized and evaluated by the expert committee and the final verdict will be given the proposal will be either accepted or rejected and if the proposal get accepted then the state government will declare and notify such areas as areas which are legally protected and therefore hence the name protected areas and according to the wildlife protection act 1972 protected areas in india are categorized into four different types and they are number one wildlife sanctuary number two national park number three conservation reserve and number four community reserves and the rules and regulation with respect to the protected areas in India are described in chapter 4 of the act from section 18 to section 38 
So with this, I believe you'll be more clear about what are protected areas in India. So now, once you're clear with protected area, then eco-sensitive zones will be easier to understand. It is from here, discussion about ESZ start. When it comes to protection of the protected areas, over the years, there has been an exponential rise in deforestation, industrialization, increased demand for conversion of a forest land into agricultural area, developmental activities, mining, etc. to name a few. It is observed that all these human activities are posing a great threat to the biodiversity rich forests including the protected areas and the area surrounding the protected areas. Therefore, in order to prevent and control or minimize the negative impact of these activities from further disturbing or hampering and cause further deterioration and damage to the natural ecosystems of the protected areas and the area surrounding the protected areas in the near future, the central government has decided that any area which surrounds the protected area will be declared as eco-sensitive zones. So, in simple term, eco-sensitive zones are those areas which surround the protected areas. Now, we'll look for more information related to eco-sensitive zones. Eco-sensitive zones are sometimes referred to as eco-fragile zone or eco-fragile areas. And for your information, in India, eco-sensitive zones are notified by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change as per the Environmental Protection Act 1986. And as per the Environmental Protection Act 1986, the Act has empowered the central government to take measures to protect and improve the quality of the environment. So, as a commitment to the Environmental Protection Act 1986, Eco-Sensitive Zone was introduced in India during the 21st meeting of the Indian Board of Wildlife which was held on the 21st of January 2002. And it was in this meeting, the Wildlife Conservation Strategy 2002 was adopted. And as per the Wildlife Conservation Strategy 2002, in order to conserve and manage the biodiversity and wildlife across the protected area in the country, the conceptualization of eco-sensitive zones in India was born. Therefore, according to the Wildlife Conservation Strategy 2002, eco-sensitive zones are defined as any land area falling within 10 kilometers of the boundary of the national park or the wildlife sanctuary should be notified as eco-sensitive zones. So with that, now let's move on to the next part and that is the general characteristics of an eco-sensitive zone. The first point is the general acceptable proposed width of eco-sensitive zone from the border of the national park or the wildlife sanctuary is within 10 kilometers. However, practically the applicability of 10 kilometers to all protected areas network in India is not at all feasible because the reason that different areas have different type of topography, habitats, grassland, forest, water bodies and also including the areas situated near human habitation and agriculture activities. Therefore, the width of the EAZ will differ from one protected area to another protected area. Therefore, due to this, in June of 2022, the Supreme Court of India has, has directed that all national park wildlife sanctuaries should have an eco-sensitive zone which is a minimum of at least one kilometer radius. Next, point number two, the delineation of EAZ around the protected area 
is or are site specific in nature for example the delineation of kaziranga national park which is located in assam will be different from that of the manas national park which is also located in the state of assam this is because the location the area covered etc are totally different from one place to another next point number 3 the extent and distribution of ehz around any protected area will not be uniform all around and this is due to the variation in the natural topographical features within the protected area and it is because of this the extent of ehz is very flexible in nature within the protected area and also from one protected area to another protected area next point number 4 the aim of declaring an ehz around any protected area is to promote ecological level of conservation to the biodiversity and wildlife present in that particular area or region and next point number 5 once an area has been declared as an ehz the activities which used to happen will be regulated so therefore there are different types of regulation in an ehz however the type of regulation will also differ from one protected area to another protected area so with this we will now move on to the next part that is we will be learning about what are the objectives and purposes of declaring an area around protected area as ESZ and they are as follows the presence of ESZ around protected area will buffer the direct negative impact of any anthropogenic activities on the protected area because it acts as a shock absorber and next ESZ will also act as a transition zone for the area from higher protection to an area with lesser protections and point number 3 is the presence of an ehz around the protected area will minimize the negative impact of any developmental activities or human activities on the protected area ehz will also to certain extent help in minimizing the forest degradation due to the regulation that has been applied when there is an ehz and also it will help in minimizing the impact of man and wild animals conflict and last but not least the purpose of an ehz is to convey a message to the locality inhabiting the area surrounding the protected area that the intention of ehz is to protect the forest from any negative impact of human activities but not to hamper their day to day activities so in a nutshell the overall purposes and objectives of ehz is to enhance the protection of biodiversity and also to prevent the isolation and fragmentation of the natural ecosystem surrounding the protected areas next once the area has been notified as an ehz then activities that normally takes place in the ehz declared area will be be under control or check and therefore activities are categorized into three different groups some activities will be prohibited some activities will be restricted or regulated and some activity will still be permitted so for example activities like mining of minerals setting up of thermal power plants establishment or setting up of industries that will cause pollution etc are prohibited and activities like cutting down of trees expansion of road air and vehicular pol- pollution introduction of exotic species commercial use of natural water resources etc 
are regulated. However, activities like rainwater harvesting, practices of organic farming, use of renewable energy resources, etc. are permitted. And for your information, these are the references that are referred to while preparation of this video. So with this, we now have come to an end of this video about eco-sensitive zones. And if you find this video and my channel helpful, please kindly support, share, like and subscribe to my channel. So once again, thank you and God blessed.